Hi, how you doing guys? This is just going to be a quick commentary on Genesis 1, so if you like to turn your KJ3 or uh, slightly lesser equivalent uh, to uh, Genesis 1, I'm actually using the King James Bible here. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Um, and so we can see that the heavens and the earth were created even before day one. Uh, came about. It was an instantaneous creation. Some say out of nothing. Um, some of the theories after this talk about a gap theory or talk about that the days were ages. Most Christians believe that the days are 24 hour periods. Uh, I believe that Einstein commented on that as well. And I've made some videos that uh, showing that it could well have been a 24 hour cycle. Um, on a rotating sphere. It would only happen on a rotating sphere because otherwise you wouldn't get the, the night and the darkness. Um, because as I've said before, the sun doesn't fade away, it sets, and the Bible backs that up. It doesn't disappear. It does go down into the horizon. Not into the sea, as Mohammed said, but basically into the horizon. And that, that shows you that we're living on a sphere. So the next verse... And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Uh, the Hebrew words, the terms here, are used tohu and bohu. Uh, it's also used in Jeremiah, that term. Um, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. So that's why, verse 2, many people think there was a, a sort of a gap that happened. Um, but that's neither here nor there at this point. Uh, there's no... Evidence of it, except that when archaeologists find uh, things that are older than 6,000 years old, according to their scientific precepts and calculations, and uh, a lot of their techniques um, are not exact, they're not precise, and carbon dating can, in fact, um, be proven uh, to not to be accurate, um, as, as they've found bones of cowboys that are only... Uh, 70 or 80 years old and the carbon dating says well they're five, five or six hundred years old and that's because of the the amount of carbon in the area at the time that increases the amount of carbon within within the, the fossils uh, and God said let there be light and there was light God saw the light that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day so again Half the sky, is, if you can imagine, is light. Half the other the sky, again, is uh, in, in darkness. And you have a rotating sphere so that uh, if, if, if you um, are not pointing towards the light, then you're in darkness. If you're not pointing towards the darkness, then you're in the, in the light, basically. That's how the, the rotating sphere works. Some call it globe. And then, you know, as... As, as I'll explain, you know, I met a guy from Global Fire Ministries. And we'll have a little chat with him, but he's not a flat earther, by the way. I just thought I'd let you know that. Next verse. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Evening in the morning with the first day. Okay, day one could have been a 24-hour rotation cycle. It's the only, other, only really other way that, that, that it could happen. If you have a, a flat earth... Uh, what you're looking at is uh, half the sky is light and half the sky is dark. Or half the earth is in darkness and half the earth is in light. And it says that there, there was a rotation, there was an actual process where uh, light was appearing and then darkness, darkness and then light. Just what we have just now, except there was no stars and no sun at that time. Okay, I hope everyone is following this. God said, let there be... Um, a firmament in the midst of the waters and let divide the waters from the waters. So this is talking about land. It's not talking about, you know, a uh, 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 glass or a whatever perspex or a brass dome. It's talking about land. Firmament is land, okay? So basically when you stamp your foot on the ground, get a pair of boots on, stamp your foot on the ground, that's called firmament, okay? That's what the Bible calls firmament. It's ground, hard ground, rock. Earth. 
And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. So we got clouds, we got uh, all kind of stuff. We got the first heaven sort of around the earth. So we've now got an atmosphere around the rock that we call planet earth. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. There's no big deal here. By the way, the second heaven are the planets and the stars and so on, but we'll get to that. It's, they're not even being created yet. And then we have the third heaven, which is the dwelling place of God, okay? Which I believe was created in the first verse, okay? So the firmament of heaven here is talking about the actual uh, firmament around uh, the earth, okay? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And again, it was so. So again, we're getting um, land appearing from the waters. And God called the dry land earth, gathering together of the waters he called seas. God saw that it was good. And so what we've got now is a fertile earth ready for God to actually do something with it to produce all the life that we see today. Um, you know, when, when you do paintings, some, some of us prep a canvas, and so we can call it Let There Be a Canvas, and then the artist prepped the canvas, and now it's ready uh, for, for painting, or it's let, in this case, it's ready for planting um, as, we, as we go along. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now this is all done in a 24-hour period. If you believe in the 24-hour cycle and not in the, the days being ages, um, ages being any period of time whatsoever, ranging from weeks to years. Um, but these, you know, the grass, the trees, everything basically just grew up within 24 hours. Accelerated growth. You know, if you've seen a, a speeded, speeded up camera, um, you know, f from a seed to a, a tree or a bush or something like that, you know, it may happen over two years, but you get it speeded up and it just looks as if it's happened in maybe 20 minutes. In this case, you know, it happens over a 24 hour period. And the earth brought forth grass after its kind, trees whose seed was in itself, and the evening and the morning were the third day. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven, divide the day from the night, let them be for signs. And for... So, so, so what I believe happened here is not, not a big bang theory. Somehow, uh, the Spirit of the Lord or the angels of God at this point, um, because we're explained in, in other books that uh, God has an archangel over the, the uh, luminaries. I believe it's Saraquel in the book of Enoch. So he's one of the, the archangels, like Michael and Gabriel and Uriel is another one. There's seven of them, the book of Revelation, that blow the trumpets in, in the last days. But one of these archangels are responsible for uh, arranging, as it were, um, the lights in the sky. So somehow that, that, that firm sheet of light was broken up into stars and possibly planets and other things. We don't know how it was done, but... If you watch a piece of wood on a lathe, you know, being carved into a plate or a cup or something like that, maybe it was something along these lines, except it was done in light. Uh, angels can do great things, and God, of course, is the one who created all things in the beginning. Let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so... Um, and it's very interesting, these next few verses, God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So what you have in the Catholic calendar, we have uh, based on the sun, and what you have in the Muslim calendar is based on the moon. But in fact, God's calendar is a solely lunar calendar. Um, and there's a lot of videos about that. There's a lot of studies on that, um, not least of all on this channel as well. So I hope you can check them out. And that's why we get all the different factions and denominations, but they're generally based on a calendar, if you can understand that. Read Jeremiah 8, 
where the certain Jewish families that led Israel into worshipping these luminaries instead of using them for a calendar, which, which the pagans do. All the religions have been tied up with this, um, sadly, for a long, long time. It brainwashed us all. That's why we need to be born again and you know get the real meaning and the real purpose of why God created the, the, the luminaries. And God set them in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and the night, to divide the light from the darkness, and God said that it was good. Okay, And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Hallelujah. Um, so you know it's verse 14 there. It says, for signs and for, for days and for years. Signs and seasons. So these are like the, the 12... Um, you know, what what you might call the Zodiac, but these are signs which actually speak about the birth of the Messiah, you know, from the Virgin to the Lion. Some really good studies on that, the Gospel and the Stars. Christ, of course, known in the King James Bible as the, the Morning Star, um, and Satan, or the Fallen Angel, uh, referred to as Lucifer, being son of the morning. And so this is metaphoric language that... Uh, is deliberately um, mixed up and uh, desecrated in the modern versions. Um, you know, trying to pass off Satan as the morning star, and he's not. He's not that. You know, Satan tries to take the identity of God. He's always trying to do these things. Triple seven again has nothing to do with triple six. You understand? Anyhow, God created great whales, every living creature that moves which the waters brought forth abundantly. Now, if you believe in the uh, evolution theory, you know, this period of time would have taken millions of years, you know, by the time uh, the small fish, you know, evolved into larger fish and grew wings and then became birds. But we're not told this in the Word of God. Uh, we're said that these creatures uh, were created basically with the breath of God, probably angelic helpers also, uh, doing the work of God, forming these creatures, and, uh, you know, all the glory to the Creator, uh, to Yote Vafi, and basically what we have is fish, birds, um, being created on the fifth day within one twenty-four hour cycle. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters and the seas, let fall multiply in the earth, and evening the morning were the fifth day. God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and uh, everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind. So you can just imagine the earth just birthing all these creatures, all these insects and animals and uh, cows and uh, lions and tigers just literally birthing them within a 24 hour cycle you know it shows you the power of God is is quite staggering I don't really care if, if it took a single day or if it took longer than that but it does say here it took God a day to create all these mammals all these land creatures and also on the same day it says well let us make man in our image as well, and in our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created him, male and female he created them. You know, chapter 2 talks about a little bit more magnifying how God did that. Some people uh, talk about that it's a separate creation, in other words he created uh, humans and men. You know, are two different creations. I know one of my brothers on there, um, online, believe that as well. I tend to think that chapter two of Genesis just basically zooms into God, how how He actually created uh, Adam from the the clay or the dust of the ground. It means Adam, uh, I believe, just means uh, red um, man. You know. Uh, so he created male and female, he created them. Again, zooming in in the next verse, he, he actually created Eve from Adam's rib. but doesn't actually go into that much detail in the first chapter. 
And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I give you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you it be for meat. So generally Adam and Eve were vegetarians and the the actual real fruit, um, the ate veg, possibly vegetables, which which may have been you know just coming up out of the earth. Uh, if you can imagine just finding all these treasures, you know, just it, it must have must have taken a long time for Adam and Eve just to find everything that God created, na- naming it and sort of working out what to do with it. What do we do with this? You know, do we cook it and, and all that? They're basically vegetarians. Um, they didn't kill any animals to, to eat the meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So even the animals didn't really kill each other. At this point, there was perfect harmony between God's creation, between man and God's creation. And man was sort of responsible for sort of taking care of the animals, and just there was just love and harmony and happiness. You know, go and hug a lion, go and, go and uh, take a ride on a giraffe, you know, just bless, basically. And God, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So hope you've enjoyed this short uh, study on Genesis 1. Any questions below, list them, please. Thank you.